What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Apa yang kami punya kesalahan dengan kau, Yesus Nazareth? Can you come to destroy us? Adakah kau datang membinasakan kami? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Tahu kamu, engkau lah daripada Tuhan Allah yang suci. And this unclean spirit knew the authority that Jesus had. Dan roh yang kotor ini tahu apa otoritas yang ada pada Yesus. Jesus could destroy him. Yesus boleh binasakan dia. And no. In our story, the authority that Jesus displays. He said back to this this man with the unclean spirit. Be quiet and come out of him. And then the unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice. And did exactly what Jesus commanded him to do. Came out of that man. Now the word authority, I looked it up in the dictionary. Dan bila saya tengok kamus tentang apakah itu maksud kuasa otoritas. And the dictionary told me authority means legal power. Dan otoritas bermaksud itu kuasa yang yang sah. The right to command and or act. Hak untuk beraksi ataupun melakukan sesuatu. And so Jesus has legal power. Over these unclean spirits. Jadi Yesus ada satu kuasa, hak kuasa yang untuk menghalau iblis ini. And He has given to us as disciples that same legal power and authority to act. Dan Dia telah memberikan kita manusia itu satu hak yang sama untuk melakukan perkara yang sama. And as we live in obedience to Jesus Christ. Dan sentiasa lah apabila kita hidup dengan ketaatan kepada Yesus, we can walk with that authority. Kita boleh berjalan dalam otoritas ini. However, disobedient people lose authority. Tetapi apabila kita taat itu manusia hilang otoritas kuasa. And we know that army even are function by authority. Dan sebagai contoh askar-askar pun ada otoritas. The U.S. Navy SEALs. They break down their groups into teams of between six to ten people. Dan tentera laut Amerika mereka pecah-pecah kumpulan tentera mereka untuk satu kumpulan enam atau sepuluh orang. Because they say that one leader can really only effectively lead between six to ten people. Karena mereka katakan bahawa satu ketua ini hanya boleh memberi pengaruh kepada enam atau sepuluh orang. But then, in order for their whole unit or their whole command unit to operate, they must have levels of authority. Dan untuk segala seluruh keseluruhan unit pasukan tentera untuk berfungsi, mereka harus ada otoritas yang bertingkat-tingkat. So they have a leader over the six to ten. Mereka ada ketua satu kepala sepuluh. Then they might have a leader over this command unit. Mereka ada ketua kepala unit-unit yang lain. And then they'll have a leader over the many command units. Then ada lagi ketua untuk menguasai beberapa unit yang lain. Finally, have a chief commanding officer. Sampai ada chief yang paling tinggi. And so long as at each level they are obeying their leader above them. Dan apabila senang biasa setiap ketua sedang mencakap ketua mereka sendiri. They can keep their authority to command the men below them. Mereka boleh menyimpan kuat authority untuk memberikan perintah kepada orang di bawah mereka. But the moment one of these officers begins to disobey their superior officer, tapi apabila orang yang di bawah ini mula menentang orang yang di atas mereka, they actually lose their authority to command those below them. Mereka hilang otoritas untuk memberikan perintah di bawah mereka. If they are found out, they'll be removed from that post. Kalau mereka kedapatan, kita kasih keluar dari pangkat mereka. And so there's a link between obedience and authority. Dan ada satu persahabatan ini antara ketaatan dan otoritas. And if we maintain our obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ and to His commands, His word. Dan kalau kita maintain kita punya ketaatan kepada Yesus Kristus dan kepada Firman Dia, we can function with authority. Kita boleh berfungsi dalam otoritas. See Jesus, He was completely obedient to His Father. Yesus taat kepada Bapa Nya. Philippians 2:8. Filipi 2:8 says, "Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross." Dalam keadaan sebagai manusia, dia telah merendahkan dirinya dan taat sehingga kepada kematian bahkan kematian di salib. In Romans 5:19. Roma 5:19 says, "For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, that's the first act." Karena sebagai melalui pelanggaran oleh seorang manusia, orang telah menjadi orang berdosa, yaitu ada yang pertama. 
So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. That's the second Adam, Jesus Christ. Maka melalui ketaatan seorang manusia ramai akan diperbenar itu Adam kedua itu Yesus. And so Yesus. with Jesus' obedience, he fully satisfied all the legal requirements. Dengan ketaatan Yesus dia telah puaskan segala hal perihal yang sah. He overcame the devil. Dia sudah kalahkan iblis. And he has legally won us. Dan secara haknya itu dia telah menangkan kita. He qualifies to be a substitute for our sin. Dia menjadi kualifikasi yang sempurna untuk mengganti no kita. Dia tidak sendiri. Karena dia sendiri tidak dosa. And he has redeemed us, purchased us. Dia telah membeli kita, telah mem, uh, mem, membeli kita. We've been delivered. Kita sudah di, And we can be healed. Disembuhkan. Through Jesus Christ, so be Melalui Yesus Kristus ketaatan dia. And his victory over the devil. Kemenangan dia terhadap iblis. And I want to think in closing thirdly how we are enforcers of the legal victory that Jesus has won over the devil. Dan saya ingin melihat seterusnya bahwa kita adalah orang yang We are enforcers of the legal victory that Jesus has won over the devil. Kita adalah pembawa atau penang mereka yang diberikan kepercayaan untuk membawakan segala hal perihal perundangan terhadap segala hak yang Yesus telah berikan kepada kita, menangkan untuk kita. Amen. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Amen. And so, we exercise this authority that Jesus has given us. Yaitu kita menggunakan otoritas yang Yesus telah bagi kita. And so, He's given you authority. Maksud saya itu Yesus sudah bagi otoritas over evil spirits terhadap roh jahat. So you can cast out demons. Agar kau sendiri boleh usir iblis. You can rebuke fevers. Kau boleh halau demam. You can pray for the sick. Kau boleh berdoa untuk yang sakit. And you can enforce the victory that Jesus has won for us. Kau boleh membawakan kemenangan yang Yesus sudah bawakan untuk kita. In Luke 9:1. Lukas 19. He says Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Yesus memanggil muridnya yang dua belas itu lalu memberi mereka kuasa dan perintah untuk mengusir segala roh iblis dan menyembuhkan berbagai-bagai penyakit. And then in Luke 10, 19, Lukas 19, 10, 19, Jesus said to a larger group of people, not just his twelve. Yesus telah berkata dengan orang yang lebih banyak lagi, bukan dua belas saja. He said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Aku telah memberimu kuasa untuk menjaga pula dan kalajengking serta kuasa atas segala kuasa-kuatan musuh. Tiada apa-apa yang telah mencederakan kamu. See, we've been redeemed. Kita sudah dibeli keluar. We might have lost that authority as sinners. Dan sebagai pendosa kita kehilangan otoritas kuasa ini. But Jesus has won the victory for us. Tapi Yesus telah menangkan. Defeated the enemy. Kalahkan iblis. And now he has restored us. Giving us that authority again. Dan dia telah restorasikan kita bagi manusia otoritas itu. Not because we're good enough. Bukan sebab kita ni baik. But because of the work that Jesus has done. Tapi apa yang Yesus telah lakukan. And so, frail, weak human beings like you and me. Macam kau dan saya manusia yang rapuh yang lemah. Now have authority. Sekarang ada kuasa over sickness and disease. Terhadap penyakit dan sakit. The devil now has no right to torment you in your mind. Iblis tiada hak untuk kasih ganggu fikiran. We can take these words of the Bible. Kita ambil apa yang tertulis di Alkitab. And then force them. Dan menggunakannya. We read Second Timothy one seven. Dan kita membaca dua Timotius satu tujuh. The God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Dua Timotius satu tujuh Allah tidak memberi kita roh ketakutan, tapi kuasa, kasih dan tata tertib. And we need to enforce what God has given us. Kita harus menggunakan apa yang Tuhan telah berikan. And it's not God that gave us that spirit of fear. Dan bukan Tuhan yang bagi kita ketakutan, roh ketakutan. Or God give us sound mind. Tetapi tata tertib, power and love, kuasa dan kasih. James four seven. Yakubus empat puluh. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
Dan ayat yang terus empat tujuh oleh yang demikian taatlah kepada Allah lawan iblis maka iblis akan lari daripada Allah. We see that submit to God is really obedience to God. Dan kalau kita melihat di depan sini taat kepada Tuhan itu yaitu kita dengar cakap dia. We put our lives in submission to the will of God. Kita meletakkan hidup kita kepada keinginan Tuhan. That authority Tuhan. that He has is given to us. Otoritas yang Dia sendiri bagi kita. So when we resist the devil, the devil flees. Kita lawan iblis, iblis lari. Amen. This is the right of the believer in Jesus Christ. Ini hak orang yang percaya dalam Yesus Kristus. Amen. Amen. My pastor, Pastor Wayne Mitchell. Pastor says to me, Pastor Wayne Mitchell, he's just completed a miracle healing crusade in Guam. Dia baru saja telah menghabiskan satu sesi penyembuhan di Guam. Just over these last uh, week or so. Dalam minggu ini. And so the news uh, station caught wind of this uh, healing crusade down in a open plaza at the beach. Jadi ada ada satu rancangan berita ini telah mendapat kabar-kabaran tentang uh, sesi crusade penyembuhan ini di dekat pantai. And so the news reporter came along with his news crew and camera. Jadi ada kamera berita ada itu temu duga itu datang dan main. Wanted to find out what was happening. And so he ended up interviewing numbers of people at the crusade. Jadi dia interview banyak orang di crusade sesi penyembuhan itu. He recorded some of Pastor Mitchell's messages. Dia record message Pastor Mitchell sikit-sikit. And uh, the, the reporter did a fairly fair report. Dan the reporter itu membuatkan uh, satu berita yang adil. Pastor Mitchell had mentioned the sin of homosexuality. Dan uh, Pastor Mitchell telah mengatakan And so the reporter had gone out uh, and found some gay people in Guam and said, "Oh, this man said this. What do you think about that?" <laughs> and uh, he found out that some of the people at the crusade uh, were used to be Catholics. And so he went and actually had an interview. I think he might have been the bishop. Uh, of Guam, and he sat down in the bishop's office and said, "Oh, look, do you know what's happening over here? What do you think about that?" <laughs> and so he, the reporter, he looked at all angles, gave a very fair report. But he was he was fascinated by these miracles that were happening. Dia pun sangat kagum dengan semua keajaiban yang terjadi di depan. And the people said, oh, come, why don't you feel, film them? Nana, mari kita kasih berita. So that's exactly what they did. They put their cameras on the lady getting prayed for. Nana, mereka pun ambil berita dan kamera dan perubahan itu dijual. And so I, I, I've just got that one of these miracles that was filmed. Dan ini yang saya film itu. And this was actually uh, spread throughout. Guam on the TV news. Dan ini yang di Guam di TV mereka. So let's take a look. You can hit the lights as well. Kita tolong untuk lampu juga. And we need sound as well. Which I did. But I'd love to be wondering if they knew what was coming. Oh, I know. 